Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I got the brackets for the rear bumper for the outer part right here. These are all four of them. Sandblasted them, epoxy primered them, painted them satin black. So now I can work on figuring out how these go onto the back of the car. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out, get them mounted, then I'll come back and show you what they look like on the car before the bumper goes on the car. Um, just because I need to look through the directions and really uh, take some time and figure out which way they go on there and then I'll come back and show you the how it's looking. Okay, so I have the outer brackets mounted. They're just loose. I have this bracket mounted. Everything's loose right now, but I have all the brackets for the two outer bumpers to get mounted. Now I'm gonna lightly bolt these on, leave everything loose so that I can get the center section on so I can figure out where all these other braces go. Okay, I've got this just lightly up there. Everything is, like I said, loose. Nothing is tightened. I'm trying to mock it all up loose so that I can uh, mess with it. So now I drilled these two holes in the fender or in the uh, frame rail here, and I made them bigger so that I can slide it around. And then this brace right here, this angle brace goes behind these two bolts here. It, it goes on an angle over to the frame, and there's spots over here you have to drill through the frame that the bracket bolts through. What that does is just gives it strength right here to hold the center section of the Continental kit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the, sorry for the shaky camera there. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes over here, get that piece on, and then I can work on uh, getting those angle mounts in on each side. And then uh, at that point, I'm looking pretty good as far as all that goes. Then I can really start um, getting this center part of the Continental kit in and really start uh, tweaking it and bolting it all together. And then um, I'll probably put this latch assembly on after the bumper is already in place. And then we are almost gonna be done with this Continental kit. It's not horrible to do at all. It's just time consuming. You know, everything takes a little time. I would definitely suggest not tightening anything up until you have it all where you want it because that can really screw you up and then you'll have to go back and loosen everything up. And I know that like some, a couple of these bolts are a little hard to get to. So your best bet's just to try to leave them loose if you can and then tighten them all up at the end. So I'll be back in a little bit after I get the other side mounted and I'll probably get those angle brackets in there and then I'll come back and we'll start working on the center section. Okay, both sides are loosely in place. I have the angle bracket inside the frame rail going over to the other frame rail. I need to drill holes for that next. Now, when you put those angle brackets in to the frame, they're slotted, so it gives you some room for adjustment. And also, you have to use these spacers. These spacers here go between that bracket and the frame rail so that it gives that uh, bracket a little bit straighter on the frame. Because if you don't use those spacers, the bracket's going to be all tweaked on an angle like that. It's not going to not going to want to tighten right plus it's not going to tighten all the way which is just going to be loose and it's going to be rattling on you so you want to make sure you put those spacers in there to bring that bracket to 90 degrees so that it runs parallel with the uh, frame rail in there so now i'm going to get under the car get those drilled out on both sides get bolts slid through those with the spacers and then at that point we can start mocking up this center here now it's easier to put the whole center section together off the car and then bolt it onto the frame rail there and there and then bolt it to your sides that's the easier way of doing it but you need two people to do that i'm by myself i need to do this by myself so i'm going to be putting these bars on by myself out here and it's going to be a real bitch to get up underneath there and slide the bolt from back there through this way and then get the nut on this side i'll get it done um, it's going to be a little tricky, um, probably have to break out some uh, different kind of tools to get in there to hold the bolt, but we'll get it done. Um, at least that way I could take my time, I'm not going to nick anything up because if I put it all together, try to push it up on the car and get and put those bolts in by myself, I run a real risk of, you know, scratching the tail pan or something like that and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to struggle with it a little bit, but I will get it one way or another. 
So let me go under there. I'm going to get those brackets done. The only reason why I'm not recording this stuff is, is there's no way to see it. But another thing on these 59 frames is where that angle bracket goes to the frame rail. There is actually, um, it's like double metal. And there's actually two cutouts in approximately where the holes need to be drilled through the frame. So that's for probably, you know, original Continental kit that came on these cars. You know, they had all these frames pre-ready pre for that kit if somebody wanted it. So, all right, I'll be back in a little bit again, and we'll be working on putting these bars in. I'm going to leave every single thing loose until everything is loosely bolted on then i'll go back and start tweaking it and getting it to fit um but it is looking pretty good it's actually fitting pretty good on the car considering how loose everything is right now um so i'm i'm real happy with that i'm happy with the spacing here that's not bad at all it's hugging the quarter panel pretty nicely same thing on this side this side has a little bit bigger of a gap right here so i don't know if i can shove it that way a little bit but these bars will determine you know where that finishes up and then once these bars are in maybe if i have to i can shove the whole assembly that way a little bit i don't know how much play i have but we'll figure that out when we get to it so we're getting there i'll see you in a little bit okay i have gotten this um all loosely put on the car i have the bolt slid through from the back sides of this all four of them so now i can start putting those bars on Put the upper one on first and then we'll work on the bottom one and we have a spacer that needs to go in there as well um let me get some uh, nuts and and uh, locking washers real quick so go that to that side all right down to both sides so now i noticed i i briefly held this up here and saw that I was off a little bit on that side. I pushed it this way, but you can still see there's some play back and forth. So I'm gonna tighten it tight to this side and shove that bumper this way because there's a bigger gap between the quarter panel and the bumper on that side than there is on this side. So by doing that, it'll draw that gap in on that side to match this side over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a nut, lock washer and a nut started on here. Kind of a tight fit with my fingers. Okay, just loosely tightened. Yeah, it's just going to kind of sit there like that. We'll do the same thing to the lower one. So let me go and do the same thing to this bottom one. And then I'll come back and then we'll put the spacers and stuff in. Okay, with those two bars in place, now what I can do is put these spacers that hold the two bars apart from each other. And we are going to slide our bolt through from the top down. I gotta put my uh, lock washer and nut on the bottom. Tighten it a little bit.
Okay, those are in. Now what I can do is, I guess we could mount this uh, part that holds the uh, spare tire. Find the bolts for that, which I think they're these longer bolts here. Always want to use lock washers that comes with the kit. So to keep those nuts from backing off. Just getting it started. I'll do this part off camera because that's going to take a little bit for me to get those nuts on there. But let me get that done, get that tightened up. I'm going to get the whole bumper assembly tightened up. I'm not going to do it on video because I'm going to be under the car, moving all over the place. And there's nowhere I can really set the camera up to get a good view of what I'm doing. But basically, I'm going to go around and I think I'm going to tighten the driver's side first because I know that the passenger side needs to get slid that way a little bit, about a quarter of an inch. So tightening up the driver's side because I'm happy with where that's at. And then I'll come over here, shove the passenger side over, tighten all that down. And I'm going to tighten everything up everywhere. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I still have to put the spring and everything on the uh, part for the tire. So I'll be back. Okay, everything is tightened, moved into place as best as I can get it. It actually looks really good. Um, the passenger side of the car looks like it's lower than the driver's side because it is because I have the front end jacked up right now and the jack's a little bit off-centered so the passenger side of the car is actually sagging down a little bit but anyways um, that's all done this is the spring right here and then this is the latch system right here now this stuff is made out of stainless steel so I'm gonna leave it bare I'm not going to paint it um, I did paint the spring silver uh, but I'm not going to mess with this because I think it looks good and it should just stay stainless in my opinion. But let me see if I remember how this goes on. I don't really remember, but I think that's right. flathead screwdriver so I can tighten it now. Let me go grab that. Okay, let me uh, get this uh, tightened up here. There is another nut that you have to put on the back once you get it to where you need it so that you can uh, lock it down with the two nuts. So I want to make sure I thread this in far enough. Okay, it's just coming through the back side now, so I'm going to go a little bit more for now. And I'm going to just stick the nut on there because I don't know exactly where this is going to end up yet. And I don't know if it's going to latch either because this latch is not exactly tightened down. And I don't know if it's uh, going to be off or not a little bit. It looks like it's off a little bit. But, tough to say, I think it's off a little bit. Let me, uh, let me mess with this adjustment a little bit on here. I'll come back and we'll see how that, if we can get it to somewhat shut. It's gonna be a little hard because we don't have the weight of the tire on here. So um, the tire weighs a decent amount, you know, with the tire and rim and that helps it slam down. So let me, uh, 
adjust this a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I got it to latch. It took a bit of effort because, like I said, there's no weight on it. So I had to really, really shove down on this thing to get it to latch. But it's latched. Um, I haven't tried to release it. It's probably going to want to spring back real hard when I do. But it is in place. Everything's tight. This is tightened up. These are tightened up. These cross, these uh, spacers between the upper and lower are tightened. And all that's tightened. So basically, I'm done with this for now. Uh, the only thing left I have to do is obviously get a spare tire put on here. Um, then I can put the covers and everything on it. Um, there's an emblem that goes on the back side of the cover. That's got to get installed. Um, the bracket for the uh, license plate needs to be installed. And the, and the kit comes with a little light which goes on the back to illuminate your um, license plate. So that'll be next. Um, I spent about a half a day getting this all lined up, drilling holes, tightening it up, you know, getting it to line as best I can right to left and everything else. Um, and I haven't done the rear balances yet. So there's still a lower balance that needs to go on. There's uh, backup lights that need to go into the rear balance. And then the center section of the rear balance needs to be cut still to accommodate for these brackets right here that the um, Continental kit comes with. So that center section needs to be cut and installed. And then I need to uh, install the two outer ones. Um, so basically, if you're gonna do this kit from start to finish, let's say you have a regular bumper on your car and you wanna put a Continental kit on it. Um, obviously, you're gonna need time first to sandblast and paint everything because it comes pretty rough. Uh, it will have some surface rust on it, it's bare metal. I don't know if you can order them already powder coated or anything like that. But anyways, I took all the brackets and the quickest and easiest way for me to prep these brackets were for me to, um, was for me to just sandblast everything because it's real quick for me to just sandblast this stuff and then take it right in the spray booth, put epoxy primer on it. And then this is just a single stage uh, urethane satin black finish um i don't really do any uh filler priming and sanding you could um because there are some grinding marks and stuff in the metal but you know what you don't see 99 percent of this you don't even see it so it's kind of a waste of time to do that you can if you want to if you want to be a perfectionist like that nothing wrong with that but in my opinion i just sandblast it epoxy primer single stage urethane it and i'm done with it so basically you'll have to do that and then after that, you're going to spend probably a good day getting the bumper all put on correctly and then getting the uh, lower balances put back on because you have to take the lower balances off to put the bumper on and then, you know, cutting the center section piece and all that. So you have at least a good day in it, you know, maybe even longer if you haven't done one. This is just filthy from hand prints and everything else. But um, I haven't done one of these in probably eight, ten years. And uh, once I started putting it together, it started coming back to me. Um, I started remembering how things fit into place and stuff like that. Um, basically from the seam here out, those are all original brackets on both sides. Those stay from your original 59. These two inner brackets are new. And then you have two angle brackets that go on the other side of those brackets that go on an angle to the frame rails, those are new. Obviously, this whole center section, all this is new in the center section of the bumper. So uh, there's a good amount of parts. They give you plenty of bolts, nuts, washers, lock washers, and all that. I actually have some extra left over because um, in a cer certain places, I used my existing that I already had because they were brand new. And I already knew where they went because I already had them next to the brackets and stuff. So I just put those back in rather than searching through some of these extra ones that they sent, which is fine. I'll put them in a drawer. I do another kit if I'm short a bolt or some something I have them I always save all that hardware uh, these are mostly half inch and 7 16 bolts there are a few 9 16 bolts here and there but for the most part they are a bigger bolt because you're holding a bumper on the car you want them to be bigger um, the carriage bolts there's four carriage bolts on the rear bumper and they go on the bottom side of the bumper um, those are new those are new chrome ones New nuts, new lock washers, every single bolt, every single nut, I put a lock washer on first um, and I tightened it the best I could possibly get it 
with getting my hands in there. And by having that lock washer on there, it's gonna help keep from that nut spinning back off on you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work on the lower balances. I'm obviously not gonna show that. It's so f hard to do stuff like that under a car. You know, um, I could show you, you know, maybe when I cut the center section, I think there's a template in the instructions here. Actually, let me look. Pretty sure there is, yes, right here. So this is what I have to do to the center section. Right here, this is a template on where you need to cut. And what it says here, it says line up with the existing hole and panel, top, center punch and drill, quarter inch diameter hole here. And then it shows right here, cut balance panel along this line. So my guess is it goes like this. Like I said, once again, I haven't done these in a long time. So I gotta take a little bit of time to look at it and see what's going on. But you get to cut both sides of the center section. And I think this relief cut here is goes around the bracket up there. Uh, <coughs> but I can show you guys that once I get that cut. I'll just probably put it on another video. So basically on the back end here, I need to put my two rear tailpipe clamps or hangers in to hang them up to the frame in the back here. I need to put the lower balances on. I need to readjust these rear tail lights. I need to slide them outwards. They're in too far. So I need to slide those outwards. Um, and I think that's pretty much it as far as back here, other than putting the cover on, the spare tire and stuff like that. So we're looking pretty good on the back end here. Uh, next is going to be the front end after I get the motor running again. I want to get that front bumper on, get that all wrapped up, and then I'll be on to the power windows. And then I'm putting uh, some, uh, like a foam dynamat material on the floors. I'm going to coat all the floors with that. Um, get the inner, I'm going to get the windows in first because I don't want to muck up or, or uh, tear up any of that matting I'm going to put on the floor. So I want to make sure I have everything inside done that I'm doing before that. Uh, I still have to put the tail lights together on the inside as far as the bulbs, the wiring and stuff like that. I have the harness sitting back here. I have to go over that. I also have to put the convertible uh, new pump in and uh, cylinders and all that. Hose all that up and get that working too. Um, and I honestly can say I've never put one of those in. Every convertible I've ever gotten has already had it already all in there. Uh, so that'll be a new learning experience for me. I've never messed with that before. Um, but I think other than that, we're looking pretty good. Uh, I gotta put the rear tires on. I need to go underneath the car still and tighten all the rear suspension. This car came to me with every single thing loose. None of the suspension was tightened. Every bolt on this car was loose. Uh, it was just kind of like finger tight, just enough to get the car rolling. So I gotta really take my time, get underneath there, and just work my way from the rear bumper all the way to the front of the car and make sure everything is tight. Uh, lock tight anything that needs lock tighted. Uh, and just go over everything while I'm under there to make sure. You know, and then once this car gets done with the interior shop and the guy gets his car back and everything, uh, I would suggest taking it to a mechanic shop. It's gonna need a front end alignment because I can't do a front end alignment here. So as they do a front end alignment, I recommend to them have the guy go over the hole underneath of the car again, make sure I didn't miss anything because I didn't put it together. You know, it came already, the frame and everything painted and assembled, so on the body, but everything was loose, like I said. So usually when I take something completely apart and put it back together, I know exactly what needs to be tight because I tighten it as I go. In this case, I'm going over somebody else's work, which everything's loose for the most part, and you know, you can miss something. It's always good to have a second set of eyes to check over your work. Uh, I mean, I built many a cars for myself, got them finished, went out and drove them down the road. I, I finished a Mustang literally at about one o'clock in the morning, and I took it for a test drive for about 30 minutes that night. Got up at five in the morning and drove to Columbus for good guys, which was three and a half hours from my house. And that was my test drive. That was basically the only time I ever drove the car. And it made it there and back. Um, it had uh, piston rings were shot because I didn't know anything about the motor. It did run, 
but the piston rings were shot. They never reseated themselves. So I was burning oil like mad. I was burning probably a quart of oil every 50, 75 miles. So I was literally just dumping. I, I got to the point where I was using 50 weight oil on the motor just to slow down the burning process until I got it back home. Then we got it back home and I, uh, I let it sit for the winter and then we uh, pulled the motor apart and uh, we uh, honed it out, re-ringed it, uh, redid the valves and everything in the head, put it all back together, drove it to good guys the following year, ran perfect, no oil burning. I put a for sale sign on it and the first day I got there, as soon as we pulled into the show, we parked, I put a for sale sign on the car, within a half an hour the car was sold. So basically the whole weekend I didn't have a car to drive around down there. I had to bum rides off of my buddies, but uh, it worked out good. So, you know, but that's my own personal vehicle. You know, it's not a bad idea to just have somebody look it over because you just never know. But all right, guys, I'm going to end this video. Hopefully this helps out anybody who's wanting to do one of these. Anybody has any questions or comments on it? Um, maybe something I could learn to maybe make it a little bit easier for me or anything like that. Or if somebody has is putting one on and needs some pictures or something, you know, send me a message. I could send you some pictures. Um, but I think for me doing it a one person job, I think I did all right by assembling this afterwards because like I said, to assemble this whole square, this whole center section, try to hold this in place and get it bolted through there by myself. I don't see me doing it without causing damage to the body or something or something else. So, all right guys, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing. Um, I really appreciate it all, and there's going to be tons of videos coming. I want to get this car wrapped up. i got to get that 64 wrapped up, which I still have to put the passenger fender on. Um, I'm going to get that done, and then I'll do another video on putting the bumpers on that car, probably. Um, the weather stripping for the doors came yesterday, and also the weather stripping for the rear panel came yesterday for the 64. That covers that top flange before the bumper goes on. So that's all here. I'm waiting on door handles and a mirror. Um, and I think that's about it for that car because I'm just putting it back together, not doing anything crazy with it. Um, like I said, that car is not a perfect car by any means. It's not an awesome paint job. It's just an, a good, decent driver. And uh, that's about it. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you later.